I've seen a lot of discussion among God of War fans regarding the state of the Norse saga. On one hand, you got people like Cory Barlock and Eric Williams confirming that God of War Ragnarok was the last game in the Norse saga. While on the other hand, you have fans that still hold to the belief that Santa Monica will once again return to the Norse realm for at least one more adventure. But I think there's a lot of confusion regarding this topic. I don't think it's an either-or situation. Yes, it's true that the Norse saga is over, meaning that Kratos and Atreus' arcs are completed, Odin is dead, and Ragnarok happened. But just because all of these things took place, it doesn't mean that the Norse pantheon will cease to exist. As many fans have pointed out, many plot points are still left in the air. This would include Sindri's unfinished story, Faye's backstory, and Jormungandr's time travel adventure. I'm only bringing this one up because Cory Barlock tweeted about it. But one detail I haven't seen anyone talk about is... God of War Ragnarok's possible hint at the next Norse villain, Forseti. There's many things I look for an inspiration when making a new lore or theory video. This could range from reading lore markers, translating runes, and just flat out analyzing cryptic moments in the story. But something I personally like to focus on is dialogue that seems to be somewhat unnecessary. And when it comes to God of War Ragnarok, it doesn't get more unnecessary than all of Forseti's mentions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me briefly play all of them for you. D don't worry, it's only a minute long. You don't want to bother Forseti. He's all work. Saw Forseti the other day. <laughs> How tragic for you. What was he doing? Investigating the kitchen. For what? He'd somehow gotten it into his head that someone was trying to poison Thor. Heimdall's dead. Suddenly this boy, who you won't stop hanging around, is nowhere to be seen. He's literally working with Grandfather! Oh. Well, that puts me so much more at ease. Forseti's investigating, so the truth will come out soon enough. I'm sorry. You are here. Why? His father murdered Heimdall. Forseti has proof. Take him. No. Leave him alone. I command it. The character of Forseti has joined the ranks of gods like Apollo meaning they constantly get mentioned in the game, but never actually make an official appearance. But the case of Forseti is even stranger, because Apollo only gets mentioned in certain skills you unlock and your optional mural. But Forseti actually plays a much bigger role in the story of God of War Ragnarok. He has his own room in Asgard, Midgardians constantly talk about him, and he was the one who connected Kratos and Atreus to Heimdall's death. But I'm sure now you're asking yourself a very important question. Who the hell Heim is Forseti? This question is very hard to answer because there's really only two reliable-ish mentions of him in Norse mythology. Well, really only one reliable mention. The second one is a little bit wobbly. The first mention of Forseti comes from the 15th stanza of the poem Grimm's Law, which only mentions that Forseti lived at a Norse hall made of gold and silver called Glitnir, and from there he settled disputes. This description has left scholars thinking that Forseti was some kind of judge, which has earned him the unofficial title of God of Justice. Now, the other less reliable mention of Forseti comes much later in Scandinavian history. In this version, the prose set us give us the additional information that Forseti was the son of Baldr and Nanna, two other Aesir gods. But when it comes to the God of War series, we know even less about Forseti. From God of War Ragnarok, we learn that Odin treated the gods he lived with more like employees than his family. Baldr was Odin's best tracker, Thor was his destroyer, Atreus was his translator, and Heimdall read minds for him. So, what purpose did Forseti have for Odin? Based on everything we hear about Forseti and God of War Ragnarok, I feel comfortable in saying that he worked as Odin's resident FBI investigator. The first instance you hear about him, Thrud tells us he's busy working in his room. Next we hear Midgardians discussing his investigation of the kitchen, as he believes someone was trying to poison Thor. I find this conversation very interesting because no one in Asgard seems to be bothered by Thor's stomach wound. Heimdall doesn't talk about it, Thrud doesn't talk about it either, not even his own wife is worried about Thor's never healing wound, but Forseti is. This tells me that Forseti is a god obsessed with prophecy. At one point in his life, Forseti must have taken a trip to Midgard and discovered a giant shrine that talked about Thor's future poisoning by Jormungandr's venom. The Midgardian women also mention that Forseti seems to be more paranoid than before, indicating that he's been keeping track of other prophesied events like Fimble Winter and Ragnarok. Poison Thor! Why not try to destroy a mountain using a soup spoon? That's what I told Forseti. Didn't do much to dissuade him though. He seems 
well, I'd say paranoid, but more than usual. Now, let me ask you something. Doesn't this description of Forsetti sound similar to someone else we know? How these people describe Forsetti, it makes him sound like he was going to be similar to the original Odin. If you go back and play God of War 2018, you might get a sense that this is not the Odin these characters are talking about. For example, a hard pill for me to swallow is that this is the same Odin who personally and physically tortured Mimir for a hundred years. This is because originally the character of Odin was going to be a more traditional evil villain. Even early concepts of Odin depict him as a brawler. This change was made because they wanted to subvert our expectations and also because the story demanded Atreus found Odin to be trustworthy. But now that Atreus is out of the Norse realm's picture, maybe Santa Monica could explore a similar villain that resembles the original Odin. Maybe this is what we'll see whenever we get to meet Forseti, a god whose main strength is his intellect, but can also get down and dirty if he needs to. Now, after the event of Ragnarok, you can visit Freyr's camp and you will see both Sif and Hildis Finney discussing how to accommodate the surviving Asgardians in Vanaheim. This seems to imply that Kratos doesn't have any surviving Norse enemies. As gods like Hodor, Vidar, and Forseti will be living in peace in Vanaheim. But I never took this conversation to mean all surviving Aesir gods were given a place to live in Vanaheim. Remember, the humans who live in Asgard can also be referred as Asgardians. Oh, are these all Aesir gods? What? You think all Aesir are gods? These are the people Sif and Hildesvini are most likely talking about, not the surviving Aesir gods. I believe all of those Aesir gods either died in Ragnarok or retreated somewhere to form their next plan. With their leader being the person that most resembled their previous leader, Forseti. But why would Forseti be the next Norse villain? Well, I'm sure him and his followers weren't the biggest fans of Kratos taking over their realm. This in my opinion would be a good enough reason for Forseti to mount an attack of some kind. But aside from this, Forseti also has a personal matter to settle with Kratos. His father's death. Baldur is kind of an enigmatic figure in the God of War universe. Much like his mythology counterpart, he too couldn't die by any normal means. But in the God of War universe, this wasn't much of a gift as much as it was a curse. Because Baldur was left unable to feel anything around him. I can't taste, I can't smell, I can't even feel the temperature of this room. Feasting, drinking, women, it's all gone. From this clip, we see that Baldur doesn't partake in eating or drinking, because what's the point? He can't die. But he also makes a reference to his, uh, blue Baldurs. <laughs> now, just because he can't enjoy the act, it doesn't mean he didn't partake in, in the past. And if we're going with Snorri's interpretation of Norse mythology, then it's safe to say that at one point, Baldur and Nana had some fun and gave birth to Forseti. And before you ask, yes, Nana is a character in the God of War universe. Sweet Nana's nethers. I know Santa Monica has left behind the theme of revenge for the God of War series, but I can't lie that having a conniving god wanting to take revenge on Kratos for killing his father, and then his old father, could be an interesting story. This story could play out in a lot of different ways. For example, we know a big character development for Kratos in God of War Ragnarok was to become more trustworthy of those around him. Take Atreus and the mask and do not look back. My son trusts you, so I trust you. Naturally, the next important question Kratos needs to ask himself is, how much does he want to trust those around him? We've established that Forseti seems to favor intellect over physical confrontation. He could go to another mythology nearby and make a deal with him to bring a pantheon war to Kratos. But I think it would be more interesting as a story if the conflict for Kratos in the next game comes from the inside as opposed to the outside. What if after the events of God of War Ragnarok, Forseti came to Kratos playing the sad fiddle? Hey, uh, Kratos, you know how Odin exploded Heimdall's, Baldur's, and Thor's powers? Yeah. <laughs> well, he did that with me too. Hey, uh, do you think you can give me a job here? I want to be better. I think it's time for me to be a force for good. Yes, yes, we, we must be better. Here, you are officially the god of justice. I know this is not how this conversation would go down, but you have to admit that Kratos has changed a lot as a character. Now he's more trustworthy of those around him. Maybe this is exactly what will get him in trouble in the next game. Forseti could pretend to be on Kratos' side for hundreds of years, waiting for the perfect moment to strike and take control back from Kratos. This could happen by tricking Kratos into killing one of his own people, revealing a dark secret from his past that could shake his people's trust in him, or worst of all, 
for said he could bring Odin back from the dead. A while back, I made a video discussing the possibility of Odin returning in the future of the series. The biggest piece of evidence for this is Atreus' odd mention of Hugin being alive at the end of the game. We don't know how yet, but this has Odin written all over it. And given the similarities between Odin and Forseti, it's possible that Forseti had an inclination for prophecy because he worked closely with Odin. Maybe Odin instructed Forseti on which ritual or spell to perform in case he died in Ragnarok. Maybe Forseti is the only god to know how to bring Odin back from the dead. And that's why he wasn't present in Ragnarok. Odin knew Forseti was too valuable to die in the conflict between the realms. As you can see, the possibilities when discussing Forseti's future role are almost infinite. At this time, we don't know enough about this character to know what he's going to do next. From his description, he sounds like a very smart and capable god. This would naturally make him a good candidate to be the next villain. But at the same time, it's too early to say for sure. But what I think doesn't matter. What do you think? Will Forseti be the next villain of the Norse Pantheon? Whatever your thoughts and theories are, make sure to leave them in the comments section below. Now, before I go, I want to make a small announcement. Tomorrow, May 1st, I will be live streaming my first playthrough of Star Wars Jedi Survivor on my gaming channel. Much like any breathing human in this world, I do enjoy Star Wars. Plus, this game was directed by the same guy who directed God of War 3. So at least I'm expecting a really good combat system. So if you want to talk Star Wars or just gaming in general, make sure to stop at the second channel at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. But with that said, I want to give a big thanks to all of my awesome members for supporting the channel monthly. People like Cloudy, Stencott, Robert Wall, Victor Cruz, William Jacob, and of course, Luke Linton, to name only a few, are truly the greatest help any YouTuber could ask for. I would also like to thank all of my other awesome subscribers for liking and sharing my videos. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it really does help the channel more than you can imagine. And with that said, thanks for watching. And remember, go forth in the name of Olympus.